Miranda Devine is an intrepid, a serious journalist at the New York Post. How are you? Hi, Mark. How are you? It's a pleasure. Very, very well. Thank you. Okay, Miranda, I don't want to bore you with the same questions you're getting all day. Let me ask you some questions that I want to pursue with you. Number one, this guy, Dan Goldman, is he not the best spokesman for the Republican Party? I mean, this guy's <laughs> such an idiot. It's, it's really hard to believe. So he says today, he comes out of there, he says, look, they spoke every day, father and son. And I'm thinking, okay, that's worth pursuing. And 20 times over 10 years, and then he divides 10 in the trace. That's twice a year for 10 years. No, it could have been 10 times in one week, for all we know, with the speaker and so forth. But here's my question to you. All they need to do is find one instance in which Hunter Biden violated the FARA. It's not a matter of piling on cases. It's one instance where he didn't register and he didn't do what he's supposed to do under the uh, federal statute. And they use this pretty aggressively against Manafort and some of the others. Mueller did. Uh, so they opened a the door to this thing. But my point to you is this. Joe Biden, you don't have to demonstrate that he took a single nickel for him to be a co-conspirator in his son's violation of FARA. All you have to do is demonstrate that one time, during one of those calls, that he knew who was on the other end. He doesn't even have to know about the business deals. Isn't that why they really don't want a special counsel and really dig into this? Because they know, and I know, and you know, that all hell will break loose. Yes, look, you, you really don't need a whole lot more evidence um, just on the phone calls alone, which today the Democrats and dumb Dan Goldman were trying to explain away and saying, oh, Joe Biden, you know, he just spoke about the weather and so on. He doesn't need to. This is how influence peddling works. Joe Biden, he was the product that was being peddled. His influence, his immense power as the vice president of the United States, who had been given power over Ukraine, China, Romania, these countries where his family, his son Hunter and his brother Jim Biden were getting millions of dollars. So he doesn't need to talk about the minute detail of the deals and how much money is being mm -hmm. paid. All he's there for is so that Hunter can demonstrate to these people who are showering him with diamonds and cash that he can get this powerful man on the phone at the drop of a hat, anytime, on call, on speed dial, put him on the speakerphone, introduce him to the group. That was what he was selling. That was worth millions of dollars. Open and shut case. And for 100%. Joe Biden now to pretend that, he, I mean, I'm not sure if you noticed, but there was a, he, he's, he's on vacation, right? He's gone hidden away. I've tried so to look no in the other direction, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> He's at the beach, yes, yes, um, and supposedly reading books. We're told, but he's away from from questions, right? That's the point. That he's it's the effective. The beach is the basement, and he, he. However, there was a podcast that he was on today, some obscure podcast, and they released the episode today. And in it, Joe Biden says, apropos of nothing, that he speaks to his family members every single day. Now, that's not a coincidence that that came out on the same day that Hunter Biden's former best friend in business has said that Joe Biden was put on the speakerphone about 20 times in his, when he was there, that he witnessed, or probably many more times, uh, mm -hmm. to speak to Hunter Biden's overseas business partners. So what they're pretending is, just some random phone call that Joe Biden had every day. He had no idea that Hunter Biden was putting him on the phone and introducing him to his Ukrainian oligarchs and so on. Um, it, it, Joe had no idea and he just thought he was being introduced to friends and he just spoke about the weather, so he's completely innocent. You would have mm -hmm. to be so dumb to buy that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why he needs to be under oath, you know. That's that's I mean that's what they do to Trump. That's pretty typical. The predicates are all there for a special counsel. Um, they're more than there. They've been there for a long time, and they just keep piling up. I mean, they blocked the IRS whistleblower. Remember, uh, he wanted to uh, 
to get some GPS alignment on uh, Joe's phone yes. to see where it was, and the Department of Justice told him no. Then these clowns come up and say, where's your evidence? Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's just, tons of evidence. Yeah. I mean, Go ahead, I'm even sorry. Even without that, uh, there's tons of evidence, Mark, as you know. I mean, there's bank statements and WhatsApp messages and emails and documents and whistleblowers and former business partners. And the more evidence that comes out, the more the Democrats say there's no evidence. It's, it's, it's absolute gaslighting and lies. Plus, you don't need evidence for an impeachment inquiry. The whole point of the inquiry is you got enough here, you better look into it. Uh, here's the thing. They don't want an impeachment inquiry, and they don't want a special counsel. And I hate to tell you this, Miranda. Most Republicans don't want it either. I'm listening to them. Yeah. And I'm saying, what the hell's wrong with these people? They don't want an impeachment yeah. inquiry where they can really dig into even more, and they don't want a special counsel. So what are we all going to do? Just keep wringing our hands over this? Uh, it, it's crazy because, you know, if you they've gone out on a limb now. I think they've done a very good job, James Comer, particularly yes. with the Oversight Committee. They've only had six months. They've uncovered a lot. Um, but, you know, you look at the Republicans in the Senate and mm. they are, I, it, it, they're carrying water for Joe Biden. There is nothing else you can say but that. That's what they're doing. And um, they don't want an impeachment inquiry. And, look, I don't know. What, what do you think? Do you think a special counsel is better or an impeachment inquiry? Because it's, it's the duty of Congress when the DOJ has failed to do their job and the FBI over many years with all these allegations that have flooded in, the, the, the House Oversight Committee is doing what has not been done for almost a decade by the DOJ. They've done a lot of it in six months, but mm -hmm. they need more power, I think, and Congress has a duty, don't you think, a constitutional duty yes. to get to the bottom of this um, since what? the DOJ refuses to do the job. You ask a great question. Each branch has their own responsibility, and they should pursue them fully. Now, the problem is we have a corrupt branch that's run by Joe Biden uh, mm. that will do nothing to investigate Biden and anything to try and destroy his opposition way over the top on so many of this stuff, on so much of this stuff. But I think the requirement is you're supposed to pick somebody for special counsel who's outside the system, outside the Department of Justice. I tried to prove last night on Fox that's exactly the opposite of what they do with Trump. But you know what? These are the cards that are dealt us. So the House should pursue their impeachment inquiry. I don't know what they're waiting for. Is there, is there a dead body somewhere? And, 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 the, and the Justice Department should be pressured to have a special counsel. With us is Miranda Devine, New York Post, outstanding columnist. Let me, let me clarify what I'm trying to say here. In the Department of Justice, they're in full cover-up mode and worse. They represent the Biden crime family. So I don't see how it can get any worse with a special counsel, and I don't think um, that he or she would be complete, completely bought off if they were to be bought off at all because uh, Merrick Garland doesn't want one. He's perfectly yeah. happy in being in control. And then on the House side, Devin Archer is their main guy for the, uh, for the committee. I don't know how many more shoes are going to drop. An awful lot of them, a centipede full of shoes, have already dropped. And if they're scared of an inquiry, they say, we have to develop this. Uh, develop what? You've had whistleblowers up there. You have the laptop up there, thanks to you folks. You have other texts, other information. You know all about this stuff. What is it that you're trying to develop exactly? So my attitude is, let's go. Let's get on with it. Yeah, look, look. I mean, they do have um, some other equally good uh, witnesses coming up um, at, to Devin Archer. So he's certainly not their only one. Um, but uh, you're right. I mean, well, they, after them, then lot, let's go. Th th there's only six months. Yeah. Look, I, I don't really know whether they'd be better off and they'd have more powers now going straight to an impeachment inquiry. Um, but, you know, it, the problem, I think, is this sort of internal scepticism. Um, you know, the Senate, you, you had, I think, Tom Tillis, it was the other day, who was saying, oh, to have an impeachment, um, you know, it's a very high bar because the Democrats cheapened the process. Yes, they did on exactly the same issue on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, they did cheapen the process. And as for a special counsel, the problem is Merrick Garland chooses 
Uh, right. He chose a pit bull, a killer, for President Trump's yep. classified documents. And he chose a pussycat, Robert Hur, for Joe Biden. We haven't heard a peep out of him. He's hardly spent any money compared to Jack Smith. I think Jack Smith spent about three or four times more at the last look. Um, so that's, that, that's how yeah, you Yeah, but they're already the covering council. up, so you can't do much worse than a cover-up. No. In other, in other words, look, Garland's I, I doing think, it himself. Yeah. Uh, look, I don't know. Do you think an impeachment... I'm sort of in two minds. I think, yeah. you know, I'd love to see Joe Biden impeached. I think he's, he's it's absolutely high crimes and misdemeanors. It's all there. And it would force the mainstream media, the left-wing media, to actually start reporting this stuff, which they're studiously ignoring. But on the other hand, uh, is it going to be a distraction before the election and take all the energy away from other important things that need to be done? For instance, well, you know, stopping the border crisis um, right. and, and making sure that the next election isn't rigged. You know, the problem we have, of course, uh, is the media. And if we had a decent media, but we don't. So, you know, I can dream all I want. But here's my attitude. Yeah. Sometimes you do the right thing because it's the right thing. And hopefully mm -hmm. the politics will follow. Maybe it won't. But I don't think we get anywhere, uh, d you know, uh, just running in place. I can tell you when I was chief of staff to Attorney General Meese, they had this thing called the Independent Counsel Statute. They were using it against him and Reagan and anybody else they could use it against. It was developed to go after Republicans. It was it was signed into law by Jimmy Carter. It was written by Barney Frank and uh, and Dodd of uh, of Connecticut. They were in a grand old time until all of a sudden, uh oh, here comes Bill and Hillary Clinton. There's Ken Starr. They're doing six seven investigations at once, and both parties came together and killed the law. If this is going to be one side warfare with impeachments and special counsels and that sort of thing, we can't win. In fact, we'll lose. And so my attitude is I'm not 100 percent sure where the politics falls, but Republicans have got to learn to walk and chew gum at the same time. They've got to be able to talk about the border, inflation, the price of food and all the rest of it, because as it is now, just my perspective, Miranda, they're talking about Trump, defending Trump all the time, and I get it. I defend him a lot because I think what's going on is outrageous. That said, defending Trump and talking about the economy. Let the Democrats defend Biden and talk about the economy. That's my attitude. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. And look, to me, there is such a simple path for impeachment. Uh, we have the quid pro quo. Um, there are pl probably many others, but there's one glaring us in the face, and it's unfinished business. And it also involves a country, Ukraine, that is currently at war, arguably because Joe Biden was so weak and opened the door, that now yes. we're bleeding money, we're bleeding cash, um, we're, you know, it's a very precarious position, and people are dying by, you know, the hundreds of thousands. And and Joe Biden basically threatened to withhold a billion dollars worth of aid unless they fired the very prosecutor who was investigating the company that his son was compromised on and was putting him on the phone with those executives. That was that was um, that prosecutor, Victor Shokin, at that time was investigating Burisma, the corrupt Ukrainian energy company, and. We know he was investigating that company thoroughly and aggressively because a couple of months after that phone call in Dubai where he was on the speakerphone with the Ukrainian, where Joe Biden was on the speakerphone with the Ukrainians, uh, Viktor Shokin went in and seized all the property in Kiev belonging to Hunter Biden's Ukrainian benefactor, the, the owner of Burisma. And there were so many lies told about that and the lies got Donald Trump impeached. So I would like Donald Trump to be out of this. I, I don't think it's helpful that he's, you know, going on his truth social and, and saying we, that the Republicans have to impeach Joe Biden or otherwise he's mm -hmm. going to make sure that they're primary. I mean, he should stay out of it because this mm -hmm. is just a clear cut case of corruption, of Joe Biden using quid pro quo and the, the catastrophic consequences since 
um, you can see in the Ukraine war. No, you make excellent points. And here's the other thing as I'm listening to you. You look at American history, whether it's Teapot Dome, whatever it is. There's nothing that compares to this. Absolutely nothing. All these foreign governments, foreign front corporations. Uh, it's so obvious Hunter Biden was shaking them down, using his father's name. He had nothing to offer these people but his father and but the name. And uh, if Joe Biden didn't know about it, it's been going on for 20 years. It's been going on and on and on. Or to quote the great Dan Goldman, at least 10 years. So it's, it's and, and I'm thinking to myself, if, if that impeachment clause is ever going to be used properly, yeah. well, when the hell is it going to be used? I mean, that's number one for an impeachment inquiry. I understand that it's a very close margin in the House. Well, they got to work hard. They got to explain what's going on to the American people. They got to earn their majority and keep their majority. We know what we're up against here from my perspective. You're 100% right on the Senate. It's pathetic, other than a handful of uh, senators, Johnson and Grassley and a few others. That is it. You're brilliant. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Tom Tillis is a a joke, to be perfectly honest with you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Ron Johnson um, and Chuck Grasley were well ahead of the curve. I mean, back in September of 2019, before we even got the laptop, why I suddenly started getting interested in Hunter Biden back then was because they produced this really thorough report with a lot of suspicious activity reports. They had half the story then. And do you know that they were, uh, Ron Johnson was prevented from getting subpoenas by Republicans in his own committee. And that was um, at the direction of McConnell, Miranda. Well, yes. And why? Because somebody there is compromised because of their friendship with Joe Biden, maybe many of them, because Joe Biden was in the Senate for almost 40 years and he was a guy. He knew exactly what was going on. He's a creature of the swamp. um, And, you know, I'm sure that he's tied up a lot of those Republican senators in friendship you know lindsey graham particularly is very uh, damaging to his own side when he talks about joe biden he was he was there in a committee the other day he really shouldn't have anything to do with it but he's there publicly talking about joe biden and saying you know he's been a friend for a long time do i believe he could take five million dollars in bribes oh no i don't oh thanks lindsey graham whose side are you on yeah he's very annoying to say the least um Well, I want to thank you for all the work that you've done and everything that you've done, even though it's come under attack or been censored, has been 100 percent accurate. So you're very careful in your reporting, as are most conservatives, by the way, because they know people are looking over their shoulders and all the rest. So I want to thank you. Keep it up. We rely on you very heavily. Thanks so much, Mark. Great to talk to you. You too. God bless.